Sinusoids, the wolf population problem. Naturalists find that the population of wolves varies sinusoidally with time on a particular island, and you're given some data about that. We're going to ask you to write a function uh, that expresses the number of wolves as a function of time, predict the number of population of wolves in so many years, and the first eight times that there are a thousand wolves on the island. More information can be found at this website right here. Press pause as needed. Before solving this problem, let's make sure we all remember the general equation of a sinusoid and what each parameter stands for. Here are the general equations, one in terms of sine and one in terms of cosine. Recall that the parameter A is directly proportional to the amplitude. The amplitude is found by subtracting the max and min and then dividing by 2. If A is positive, the graph is normal, and if it's negative, then the graph is reflected with respect to the line containing the inflection points. Press pause as needed. B is inversely proportional to the period. Recall that the period is 2 pi divided by B, which is also equivalent to B is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Those are equivalent equations. Pause is needed. C is the horizontal shift in sines and cosines. We call it a phase shift. If C is positive, C shifts to the right if we're subtracting a positive number. And if we're subtracting a negative number, then it shifts to the left. Pause. D is the vertical shift. The graph of the line y equals D is the line through the inflection points. And D is found by taking the average of the max and min. Pause. So here's a summary of all these things right here. Pause is needed. Resume when you're ready. So let's go back to the problem. Notice that the problem says that the population of wolves varies sinusoidally with time. That means that we're able to model this with a sinusoid equation. When we solve an applied sinusoid problem, these are the five things I prefer that we do. First, draw a picture if it makes sense to draw a picture. Second is to make a table of values that are supplied in the problem. Third, sketch a graph by hand from the values in the table. And from that graph, write the equation of the curve that best models the data. And using that equation, we can solve the problem, either algebraically or graphically, or both. So these are five steps in words, single words. So here, let's go ahead and take time to go ahead and read the problem. Pause is needed. So a picture is really no help here. Drawing a picture of a wolf is not going to help. So there's, that, that wouldn't help here. So we'll go on to the second thing, was make a table. And so here's the table. We're going to have years and number of wolves. After 2.5 years, a maximum number of wolves is 1,100. So we'll go ahead and put that into our table. 2.5 years, 1,100, and it's a maximum. After 5.2 years, uh, the number of wolves is a minimum, 300. So we'll put that into our table. Now, from that, we should be able to figure out when the next maximum point is going to be. Pause is needed. So from 2.5 to 5.2 goes from a max to a min. And if we subtract those, we get 2.7. So for the next mat min, to get to the next max, we'll go ahead and just add 2.7 to that 5.2 and get 7.9. And we know that's a max because it alternates max, min, max, min. So that's going to be at 1100. 
The next min, pause is needed to answer this. Again, we'll do the same thing, add 2.7 to 7.9. That'll take us to 10.6 years, and the minimum will be 300. Pause. So what happens halfway between each max and min? Think about that. Well, we get points of inflection halfway between the max and min on sinusoids. So we should be able to find the coordinates of each of these points of inflection in between the max and min. So let's go ahead and find the coordinates of this first point of inflection. All right, so finding those coordinates, we'll look at the year's coordinate first. We know it's going to be halfway between 2.5 and 5.2. So we can calculate that coordinate either by dividing the difference between them by 2 and then adding it to 2.5 or subtracting back from 5.2. And so at 3.85. Or another way would be to just average 2.5 and 5.2 and the middle will be 3.85. So that's the x coordinate or the horizontal coordinate, the years comport, uh, coordinate. What about the number of wolves? How many number how many wolves will there be at that time? Well, again, halfway between these two numbers, we have to find the average or halfway between, which will be 700. So our coordinates will be at 3.85. There'll be 700 wolves, and that's a point of inflection. Pause is needed. So I'd like you to go ahead and find the other two points of inflection. Pause to do that. Resume when you're ready. So again, we'll find the average between 5.2 and 7.9, the middle of those two, and that'll be at 6.55. And so the coordinates will be 6.55700. At the next one, it'll be the average of these two and that'll be at 9.25, also comma 700. So I think we need to summarize our findings in a better looking table here. So let's go ahead and do that. I've marked the max, the points of inflection, the minimum, pause is needed. So we're gonna go ahead and graph this. So before we can graph it, we do need to decide on the markings on the axes. So for the horizontal years, I'm going to start at zero and go to at least 11 in steps of one year. And the vertical number of wolves, I'll start at zero and go up to at least 1,200, so we include the maximum, in steps of 100 wolves. So let's go ahead and draw that. So you can see we went from 0 to 11 in years, and, and this was number of wolves uh, from 0 to at least 1,200. Pause is needed. Now what I did is I drew horizontal lines uh, lightly at the, the max, the point of inflection, and at the minimum to help me graph this, kind of like lined graph paper, if you will. And so now I can go ahead and plot these points. These are ordered pairs, years, comma, number of wolves, starting with 2.5, uh, 1100. So over 2.5, up 1100. 3.85, up 700. 5.2, 300, and so on. Next one's a point of inflection. A maximum, point of inflection, and then a minimum. And I could have continued this table, but I thought this was enough. Now what we want to do is connect these points with a cosine curve. I know you'd be tempted to just draw straight segments, but we know that this is a cosine 
or sine curve. So let's go ahead and start with the first two and go concave down like a frown. Then concave up like a smile. Concave down and concave up. Pause is needed to get caught up. Now we're ready to get the equation from the graph. These are our two general equations. We need to decide which one we want to use, and, and we could use either one. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's up to you. It's preference. Since this seems to start at a maximum, I'm going to go with a cosine curve. So I'm going to use that first equation instead of the sine equation. What I need to do now is identify or calculate the values for the four parameters, A, B, C, and D. Recall that A is the amplitude, and that's found by taking the max minus the min and dividing it by 2. And when I do that, I get 400. So capital A is 400. That's its value. We can also see it on the graph. It's half the height of the graph, so to speak, or from the points of inflection to the max, or points of inflection to the min. B is inversely proportional to the period. We can use either one of these equations right here. Now if we look at this, what is the period of this graph? So you can see going from max to max, we go from 2.5 to 7.9 also from here to here if you look at the graph, look at the table or the graph. And if you subtract those two values you get 5.4 and that is the period. That's how long it takes this curve to go through its complete cosine curve. So B is equal to 2 pi divided by that period, 5.4. So we've got A, we've got B, let's go ahead and look at C. That's the phase shift or the horizontal shift. For the cosine, this shifts to the right. You can see it right up here. And it's shifting to the right two and a half units. So C is going to be equal to a positive 2.5. Other values are possible here. If we would have gone with a sine, we could have started here on a sine curve. We could add a negative cosine and started here many different options. D is the vertical shift and that's found by taking the average of the max and min. So if you add those up and divide by 2 you get 700 which again is the line containing the points of inflection. Pause is needed. So here we have our collection of four values. We're going to go ahead and substitute into this general equation. And we get this is our equation right here. Pause is needed. Now we're ready to go ahead and solve. It took all this time, but now we're ready to go ahead and solve all the questions, answer the questions. First one is to write an equation expressing the number of wolves as a function of time in terms of t. Okay, so we're going to use the same equation, except now we're going to say that number of wolves, capital W, is a function of capital T time in years, and we replace the x with a t. So it's pretty much the same equation, just using function notation. We want to predict the population of wolves seven years after keeping records. So there are several ways to do this. We're going to illustrate all of them. So one way is graphically. If you go ahead and, and to your graphing calculator, um, type in the equation and then create a window so that you can see it okay, similar to this window right here. And when I graph it, this is what I get. 
I did put in grid lines so I could see it. Yours might not have grid lines, and that's okay. And then I can trace to 7. When x is 7, I get the y value of 900 wolves. Pause is needed. Second way is I could use a table instead. Still, I'm going to have this in my Y1, but when I go to table setup, I'm going to change the table so that the independent is in ask mode. And that might be something you not have done before. So that when I press second graph and go to table, there's nothing there. It's waiting for me to ask for the numbers I want. So I'm going to go ahead and type in seven and press enter. And you can see I'm getting the same answer, 900 wolves in the table. Same answer, just a different way of getting it. Pause. Third way, which I really like, is function notation. Uh, we still have this equation uh, typed into Y1. You go to the home screen and then bring up Y1 and evaluate it, left parentheses, seven, right parentheses, just like you'd say F at seven, Y1 at seven. And again, you get the same answer, 900 wolves. Pause is needed. Predict the population of wolves in nine years, 15 years, 56 and a half years. So we'd like you to try that and use either of the ways, whatever ways you want. Um, go ahead and answer the questions above. Pause is needed. So for nine years, I decided to use the trace on the graph. So when I trace to x equals nine, uh, I get a little, I get more than halfway between 814 and 815, so rounding up to 815 wolves. In 15 years, I went with uh, the table and typed in 15 and got 542 to the nearest number, poll number. And then using function notation, got 1100. Now it also says discuss why your answer is 1100. Is there a reason for that? And the answer is there is. At two and a half years we hit a maximum of 1100 wolves. 56.5 is two and a half plus 54. Now what's so special about 54? Well 54 is the period 5.4 times 10 which means that 54 is also a period of this equation. And so y at 2.5 is going to be the same as y at 56.5 because they're 54 years apart, periods apart. And so that's why we got the same answer for the maximum. Pause is needed. The last question, what are the first eight times to the nearest hundredth of a year after keeping records, are there a thousand wolves on the island? So we're going to solve graphically and then use algebra as well. So I've got the, the window, I've got this. I'm going to now graph on the same pair of axes the line y2 equals 1000 and it's going to be in red. And you can see that it intersects in one, two, three, four places. We want eight, but that's okay. We don't, we, we'll be okay. We could have extended it out, but we'll be fine. So what we're going to do is find the coordinates of these first two points of intersection. And then I'll show you what we're going to do after that. But let's go ahead and find the coordinates of the first two intersection points. So I'm going to use the second calc, uh, find the intersect, and I found the intersection to be at this point right here. And we need to uh, round that to the nearest hundredth, so I'm going to call it x1 is 1.88 years. For the second one, I use, again use the intersection tool, and I got 3.12 for the second x value, x2. 3.12 rounding to the nearest hundredth of a year. Now to get the third one, I have to realize that going from the first one to this third point of intersection, those are going to be 
a period apart, which is 5.4. Think about that. So the answer I got in x sub 1, I'm going to add 5.4 to get x sub, th x sub 3's value, 7.28 years. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And for x sub 4, I'm going to do a similar thing. From the second point to the fourth point is also going to be a period, a whole cosine wave. And I'm going to add 5.4 to 3.12 and get 8.52 years. So what we'd like you to do is calculate the remaining four times. Press pause to do so. So the answers are, are listed here, showing you how you get them. Uh, press pause is needed to double check. And keep in mind that all the information is at this website.